I just wanted to take a second and talk about how I first met you, Jaharn. I believe I saw you um, connecting with Bonnie Christine, and I reached out to you in 2021. I was I, I was pregnant, and I was like really feeling like I needed some direction in my portfolio, and so I I think I reached out and I had booked a portfolio review like a couple months out, so I had time to prepare for it. It was an incredible resource because you recorded the conversation and so then I could like go back to it. So actually I still refer to it today. Um, and our conversation really shown the, it like shined light on the direction that I felt like I should take with my work, um, which was, it was a great thing, but also really hard in a way because I had already committed to a couple of future shows that, you know, were not on the same course as what you and I discussed. So it's been a little bit of an iterative journey, but really fun. And that's why I decided to take your creative goal this year, um, which is the course that you, uh, that you're teaching. And if you want to speak a little bit about that, you can, but I, I just wanted to, I felt like, okay, now I'm ready. I can really commit to this direction. And so I just had really enjoyed taking your course and I'm just grateful that you're, you agreed to come chat with me today. Oh, thank you, Cynthia. It's an absolute pleasure to be here and absolute pleasure to talk to you um, in more detail. And thank you so much for having me. Um, amazing to think that it's already three years since uh, your portfolio review. And I've absolutely loved watching you grow and develop since then. It's such a joy for me to, um, you know, to really see see the impact and, and how we can you know, all, all come together really in this community to support and further our journeys. Yeah, I love that about uh, what you what you do. I really feel like your authenticity and like human human centered approach it resonates with me. And I actually that was one of the things I had written down to chat with you about. I, I wondered could you describe how significant relationship building is in your in your weekly daily activities? Yeah, absolutely. That's such a great question. And I would say it's absolutely highly significant. It's um, one of the things that's, you know, at the top of the list, both with building our relationships with, with my clients and also building my relationships with the artists that I exclusively represent, which is for illustration and art licensing, and also with my community. And that includes, um, you know, a lot of artists that have taken part in my challenges or who I'm just connected with on Instagram. I absolutely love to see what other artists are doing, um, whether or not we're working together or not. Um, so, you know, relationship building is absolutely everything, I think, when it comes to, to business as well. Um, just to give you a few weekly examples, I will um, email clients new work daily. I will share on Instagram daily. Um, I'll have a one-to-one -one with one of my artists every week. We'll have team meetings with, you know, um, the J team here to connect. And, and I'm running a weekly challenge as well so that all artists, you know, whether or not they have an agent or not, whether or not they're one of my artists or not, so that we can really all connect, build our relationships both with each other and also with ourselves on our own creative thinking. And then ultimately as well with, you know, with the industry and with clients. I love that weekly challenge and I get a little bit of FOMO because I can't always participate. I can, you know, <laughs> barely participate this year right now, but I'm like, oh, that's so inspiring. I really want to join in, but it's just so nice to know that it's there. And then um, I love the the 12 days of Jaharn for Christmas. It's just like oh, the greatest. And it yeah. feels really fun to be in all parts of the world, kind of collectively as artists working on similar prompts that is something that it just feels like you're part of something much bigger than yourself that's what I love about it yeah um, yeah absolutely yeah no it's so exciting and I just love seeing the variety of different responses to this you know to the same prompt which just really always accentuates how we are all individuals and that's what we need to focus on I think and um, and cherish yeah well, actually, could you that take, uh, I should have introduced you a little bit better in terms of what you do, but I um, I think you kind of covered it with working with the artists and also with clients. But could you share with us what exactly an art agent does for artists and clients and then discuss a little bit of the benefits that both an artist or a client can gain from working with an agent? Yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you, Cynthia. I love that. I love that question. And I've been thinking about this and I think it's also really important just for me to share that I can only speak for myself 
Um, I'm an artist. I've had 30 years experience in the industry and prior to setting up my own agencies, I've had other agents and my own agents have worked differently and how I work is very much how I personally love to work. Um, and it's really just thinking about the three kind of really impactful things that an art agent that I do for my artists and my clients. So of course there's the contractual, there's the administration, there's all the marketing, there's all of those, all of that side of, of the work. But I think the most important thing is to proactively really tune into my artist's vision and to really promote that specific thing to, to my clients. So I'm really connecting and understanding the artist's vision and connecting that to the client's vision. So I'm really looking for a lovely fit on both sides. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something quite specific that I do. Um, I also really try and keep my artists inspired, um, keep them creating work which works for them, but which will also be a fit for my clients. And really to give them, both artists and clients, real consistency, both in communication with me um, and with you know creating new work and being active really and, and and being approachable I think as well yeah I get like ideation is like a big part of what you're doing I feel like um for everyone mm -hmm. oh like connecting the ideas with the artists and the clients um because actually that was another thing that I found really insightful you shared in in your creative gold um, about your proactive approach to collaborating with potential partners by offering ideas alongside the artwork. I think it was just like you recommended for us as artists when we're going to reach out to people to um, to kind of say a little bit more than like, here's my artwork, but like, you know, here's some ideas I have for my artwork. And I just found that like a huge light bulb moment for me. I just wondered if you could discuss that a little bit, um, if there was anything else you wanted to share about that. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I think sharing ideas is is a really significant part of the work because our work is so much more than than the visual, um, you know, solution that it's providing. It has it has a context and a content and it has a narrative. And whilst you might be sharing that one visual idea, you might have ten others. Um, so also, how can you use communicating your ideas and how that idea might be used to really share more about your own personality, your own individual vision. Um, and also how you can keep the conversation going. So I will constantly be talking to clients and suggesting ideas. The artist might also um, you know, have shown extra ideas for how their work can be applied. But I will also take that one step further and say to the client, you know, have you thought about um, you know, for example, have you thought about combining your relaxation books with these wonderful whales that my artist Catherine Quinn illustrates? You could have a book and you could call it The Art of Wellbeing mm -hmm. with a pun on the word whale. Um, and um, that, that book was actually made into a book. That actual concept was made into an actual book, um, which I actually have behind me um, on the shelf here. Yeah. Um, so this is the art of well-being. Oh, that's beautiful. And it's a little relaxation <laughs> book. And it's words. just full of really beautiful quotes yeah. around well-being. But that that's an example of, you know, an idea that that I've kind of really brought to the table as well. Um and yeah, it's just really, really important, I think, to keep the conversation going. And I think it really also helps with creative overwhelm if you actually start just breaking things down a bit more and showing how one idea might be able to be used before you kind of put that pressure on yourself to then create more ideas um yeah I how like the artwork can go so much further than one application to um I at one point was like studying studying William Morris and like came across Walter Crane and Saul, like I, he, I guess, like did a lot of that in terms of applying art to so many different, um, different applications. And I, and it kind of opened up my eyes. This was like years ago on like how I can use one piece of art, but I never think to tell, like I'll, I'll submit to different, um, you know, port 
portfolios or magazines. And I never think to say like, I could really see this, you, you know, you using this in this way and how, and it makes so much sense because it brings so much value to them. And in fact, like I've already submitted my work and gave ideas in editorial applications, like, Hey, what about writing a piece about this? You know? yeah. And I thought, wow, that could bring yeah. so much more value. Exactly. Absolutely. And I think it just really shows the person that you're talking to that you're really looking at what they do mm -hmm. because what you might suggest to them, which is specifically suitable for them, Mm -hmm. you know, it might not be suitable for somebody else so it, it just it really builds your relationship again we're back to building relationships yeah yeah and it also helps me to connect with what I'm really excited and passionate about too because oftentimes when I'm creating something there is an idea a greater idea behind it and you know whether it's like connecting to the plants for instance in my in my in my instance or in my application is a lot of times I'm connecting to the plants in like a different way. Maybe it's medicinal or something like that. And then I can look at it and think like, oh, well, how many people are using artwork in that way or could use it in that way? And it just kind of like deepens the whole project for me in a really exciting way. Um, yeah, so thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. No, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> so for artists who are new to art licensing, what advice could you offer for cultivating relationships and navigating the industry? Um, so yeah, that is a really good question. I made some thoughts about that. Let me see what I was thinking. So again, it's kind of just trying to summarize sort of the main points because I think we can all get really lost in the detail, can't we? Um, so I think ultimately it's about really staying active. So I think if you're new to art licensing, um, and even if you're not, you know, if you, even if you have been working in this industry for a long time, it's still really important to stay active we always have to continue to nurture relationships once we've built them so that that never really goes away I think so I think consistently sharing your work um consistently sharing your work and being active on social media I think that's a really big one um and you can do simple things you know comment on different posts every day even if you just say I'm just going to do two or three comments every day um just to consistently cultivate and build those relationships um, and I think if you're creating artwork, a brilliant thing to do really is to take part in all of the challenges that are happening. Um, and there's a challenge which I'm running, which is a weekly challenge that we've talked about. And work that's created for my challenges is often the very first piece of work that an artist will li actually license. So they're really proven to generate work, which is um, created in a way which where the artist is inspired because they're really part of a fun thing as a community but it's also responding to somebody who has a sense of well this is the this is going to potentially really also attract somebody in the industry to buy your work um, so there's a lot of thought that goes into that so that's something that I would really encourage new artists to do um, and if if people want to join in with that there's a link on yourcreativegold.com forward slash golden thread that's that's the weekly challenge um, can you I'm explain really that excited. golden thread a little bit i love the idea yeah. behind that and that would yeah <laughs> so yes yeah, so it's called shahan's golden thread um and it runs all throughout the year so 52 weeks so a, one prompt every week for 52 weeks and i split it down into four themes so four quarters, so four themes. And the idea is that you create the first piece of work at any point throughout that year. And even if you miss a couple of prompts, that the next piece that you create is somehow connected to the piece that you've done before. So you continue something that you've liked in the first piece into the next, and then something that you like from that next piece into the next. So it really supports you in creating a golden thread of your creative thinking mm -hmm. because you're looking at your work and you're thinking, well, what do I actually like about this piece that I could take forward? Whether that's composition, whether it's color, whether it's a texture, mm -hmm. um, that's completely open. But it just really means that instead of doing one single idea that's not connected, another single idea that's not connected, you're creating a thread, you're creating a connection from one piece to another. Uh, to support you in your in your creative thinking ultimately mm -hmm. uh, but also to create more of a 
connected set of work mm -hmm. which is really beneficial for all sorts of different reasons um so yeah it's a, a golden thread or a thread and i imagine the, the ideas too are also useful to now like what is trending and you know probably attracting clients just by mm. posting it you know mm. yeah absolutely yes um and it's fantastic we've already seen artwork for the challenge used as a magazine Font covers for magazines oh, wow. um, already on spoon flower there's you know there's lots of exciting things happening with the work that's being created so yeah it's a really fantastic way again I think of reducing the overwhelm especially if you're new to art licensing because you have a deadline of a week you know you, you can't get too lost in procrastination <laughs> yeah I found actually because I did one of them recently it was a couple weeks ago and I was like oh I'll explore and I'll use gouache and I'll play around with like I basically did different art forms that I never do so I use gouache and then I was like I'm gonna use illustrator to render the pattern which I never do and so I created this thing and it's all right, but it, it like really stretched me because I was just doing something different than what I would normally do. So yeah. um, I find it like a yeah. fun way to kind of stretch in different ways mm -hmm. too. You know? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. No, that's a really good point. And it keeps um, me humble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is great, isn't yeah. it? And I think we all need to stay humble yeah. wherever we are. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's really fun. Um, during the course you mentioned during your creative gold, you mentioned the strategic advantage of like, disc like creating a pattern, but not necessarily making it repeatable, just making it like a suggested pattern. And I loved that idea because I've spent a lot of time, you know, creating patterns and getting kind of like really hung up on making sure that it's a repeat, um, instead of thinking about it as a composition in itself. And mm -hmm. I just wondered, is that something that's like pretty standard for companies that you work with, like where they all actually have someone in-house that creates these patterns into repeats, or is it just like, we kind of wanted to hear more about that. Yeah, no, I know there's some really other interesting question. Yeah, I know there's some other artists who are really interested in that because like maybe they're mm -hmm not necessarily technically skilled or they don't they don't mm -hmm. want to learn repeat patterns or they don't feel comfortable with like the math part of it and so I feel like it's just so good to know that you don't necessarily have to do a repeat yeah, pattern. yeah absolutely definitely no I, it's um it's very common that that you can have that support in-house not every company will do it um I would say you know potentially 50 50 mm -hmm. but I think it really it really is an opportunity and an option for, for clients to help you and support you in-house. And I think especially if you have layered files. So if you have artwork, which isn't in repeats, but it is layered, that's going to make the world of difference um, for, for that client to really support in-house to put patterns together for you. Um, and, you know, they often have, again, you know, the, the client isn't also a creative body. They also have their own ideas and vision. So sometimes for them to be creating the pattern, mm -hmm. they will then craft it in all sorts of lovely, exciting ways that, that we might not have thought of. So, yeah, it can be a really, really you know, creatively interesting process as well. But, um, yes, I think it's really important not to get too um, hung up on the maths of patterns. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think uh, it's, I'm going to kind of work towards that myself. I'm like, okay, what does it look like for me to just have fun and re, you know, kind of fill a square and then make it, you know, whatever I really want it to be and not even think about it repeating because I think it will look mm. really different than mm. what I do right now. So yeah. Yeah. Good oh, I love that you do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think that a lot of people can relate to this question that I have, but as someone who juggles multiple creative roles, I'm really eager to hear advice on positioning yourself in the market with like balancing a job, your family and other commitments. And I just wondered if you could share some strategies that have worked for you or your clients. And I'm happy to share more details if you want any. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I'd love to hear what your strategies are, Cynthia. It's such, <laughs> such, such an important question. And I really understand the challenges. <laughs> My partner and I have four children. Oh, wow. Us. And um, yeah, so so we really, I, and I really understand, and I've always, I've always worked so hard um, and been balancing a lot. And I think 
the key strategy that works for me is to really identify your passion Mm -hmm. really identify your passion your top priority passions and what makes you tick and just be really strict and focus on those Mm -hmm. so you might have the technical ability to do a lot more than the things that actually make you tick but really identify what those things are and be really strict and focus on them because then you can really make your time count yeah Um, and you know life is short and it's important that we do the work that we want to see out in the world so for me it's supports so many decisions that might come up that I've got this real kind of key anchor of of knowing what my what my criteria is what my vision is what my passion is yeah and that makes that makes things a lot easier and means that when you do get a real time to work you can focus much more quickly and be much more productive um and I think my it works for my clients because they also have to have a very specific sense of what they're trying to achieve. Um, and obviously really thinking about how you can then find the right audience mm-hmm. for that. So don't start with your audience and work backwards. Start with your own passions and then really think about that audience and where they are so that you can do your research and find you know find those people and let them find you yeah that really resonates with me I I did have I got my master's in fine arts communication design and what I basically wrote my thesis it wasn't technically a thesis we had to do like a a, a project that was larger but we wrote a you know 30 page paper or something like that and I wrote all about um basically you, you know how pa- following your passion is going to increase your happiness and work. And so I studied all these different people who like follow their passion no matter what. And I think that's actually what really attracts me to you because it's so apparent with your artists that they're just loving what they're doing. And it just Mm -hmm. almost like comes out of the work. Like you look at the artwork and it's just like flourishing and like happiness and beauty and like abundance and all these things that I just love. Um, and so that it just resonates with me, but it was, it's just funny because in that study, I had found that there's a lot of people like even Beatrix Potter, who like she, she technically kind of failed so many times, like not getting published. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think she just ended up self-publishing. And then, um, you know, once she self-published, sold out her first copy, I think of Peter Rabbit, then everyone, then the, all of a sudden the publishers were interested. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, I think it's just a way of, you know, being committed to the passion is it's hard. I think, especially for someone like me, when we talk about like juggling multiple roles and, you know, I'm running my business and Mm -hmm. I have client projects that I love and appreciate and value. And then I also have to carve out the creative time, you know, separate Mm -hmm. from the family time. And so it's just like, it's a balance, but I feel like just really, Mm -hmm. um, I love Mm -hmm. the advice of connecting with what you're passionate about because, Mm -hmm. and actually you said that to me in our uh, portfolio review, something about, you know, like, well, what do you want to be remembered for when you're not here? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, exactly. That really kicked me in the pants because I'm like, okay, like, you know, like that, such a good grounding statement of Mm -hmm. like, okay, Mm -hmm. you only have one life. Like, let's just do this thing. (laughs) Yes, exactly. What's, what's the legacy? Yeah, Yeah, I think so. Um, and it's really interesting that you've got the two sides to your business. And I think that we still have to do that within, we just have to do it twice, you know. So I, I do it within my agency, Shahan Limited, the illustration agency. And then I also do it with my thinking of your creative gold, which is a course for artists. Mm-hmm. Um, and in both situations, I've thought, I've applied the same strategy, Um and in both situations, it, you know, it it works. And I think, you know, if, if you don't love what you do, if you don't believe in what you do, then how can we really expect anybody else to engage with it? Yeah, really. So yeah. Yeah. such a good, a good reminder. And I think I always, I think it's just a balance. Sometimes you do have to, you have to be able to pay the bills. So mm. if it's like, you know, doing the work, just making sure you carve out time for yourself to do things that you really love. Um, mm. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. If that, does that sound like what you would recommend to? 
Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think I think as well that you know to do to do good work takes time. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to spend a significant amount of time on something, let's make it something that really counts. Yeah, yeah, I and like that too. Often that is the secret to commercial success as well. Yeah, like just committing to it long term and not being so concerned about how long it's taking too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> um, I love I love how you craft the mood boards and think through upcoming trends and really inspired by that. And I just wondered if you had any advice for clients or artists looking to bring a product to market in terms mm -hmm. of connecting their ideas and passion with what works in the current market. Yeah, I love your emphasis on thinking about the clients as well. I think it's really interesting. And I think with this question, again, there's the starting point is, as we've been talking about, that you start with your ideas and your passion first, that that needs to be your guiding star. Mm -hmm. And in some ways, if we're talking about bringing a product to market, I think in some ways, ideally, it won't necessarily already be something which is proven to be working in the current market, because ideally it will be new. Ideally, you'll be bringing something that's unique. So therefore it's it's always going to be a bit of a risk but that's also exciting um and you learn as you do as well so it might not necessarily work the first time um but yeah i think it's just that taking that moment to really kind of identify your needs and really think about your product and think okay well what what needs does this identify for the person who's going to buy this or engage with this how does it impact their life? And what does that tell me about my product and how I might tweak it, how I might promote it, how I might show it? And how can you really do your own, do, do your research in terms of what else is there in the market that is addressing those similar needs? But whilst I think always coming back to that point that you want to be bringing something unique. So hopefully it won't, um, it won't necessarily already be there you know, mm -hmm. in, in the market because you're bringing something really new. And I think that's that's the secret to a great product. So it's it's a it's an unpredictable thing, which is, yeah. which and is then, fun. It's no easy answer. Yeah, I imagine there's like a lot of overlap too, just because it seems like people are creatively on the same brave uh, wavelength. So sometimes you're working on a new idea and, you know, someone else is kind of working on a parallel idea that seems yeah. Yeah. And it just kind of happens yeah. simultaneously. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Simultaneous discovery. I think they call it in science because that's oh, really? something. That oh, yeah. 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 That makes so yeah, much yeah. sense. Yeah. Simultaneous discovery. So yeah, absolutely. Um, that's such good advice. Yeah. All of that, like those bullet yeah. points that you just shared. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I wondered, do you want to share uh, more about where we can find you? So, um, you know, I'll definitely include your website and Instagram, but I just wanted to, to give you a chance to talk about the course, anything else you wanted to share. Oh, thank you so much. Um, yeah. So um, where can you connect with me? So my Instagram account is uh, Shahan Limited. So if I just spell that for you, because it's a little bit, <laughs> a bit difficult name. So it's J E H A N E mm -hmm. underscore L T D Shahan Limited. That's my Instagram. And my name, if anybody's wondering, is I think Joan of Arc was called Shahan. So it's medieval French. Um I love it. It's so unique. Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> um <laughs> when I was a little girl, I used to sign my drawings Linda because I Lin <laughs> I know I've grown into my name. So oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I love it now. And um, I also have another Instagram account, which is uh, Your Creative Gold. Mm -hmm. And that is really an ongoing way for me to connect on a weekly basis with the artists who are in my community that have taken part in my, my online uh, live course, which runs over seven to eight weeks once a year. And it's essentially how to build a powerful portfolio and it's just a wonderful way for us to connect as artists and the Your Creative Gold Instagram. I'm constantly sharing artwork by my alumni and students that have taken part in, in that community. So it's an ongoing um, benefit and, and way for us to you know, just keep in touch. Yeah, and there's really so inspiring to see. Challenge. 
Oh, thank you, Cynthia. Sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you. No, you didn't. No, you were fine. Um, I was just saying it's really inspiring to watch all the new work that everyone's creating. Oh, yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? I just love it. So, so inspiring. Um, and if it's helpful for anybody, actually, there's um, talking about agents, there's a, a free golden resource that I've put together, which is about finding your agent. So if anybody would like to sign up for that, it's your creative gold forward slash find your agent. So okay, I'll add a link www. to that. Yeah, correct. Great. So yeah, www.yourcreativegold forward slash find your agent. And that has 10 key questions to ask yourself and potentially ask an agent to just help support you thinking how you might like to work. Um, and the Golden Thread Challenge is a fun thing to take part in where each piece is informed by the piece, something you liked from the piece before. Um, and uh, yeah, really, Thank really you exciting. so much. These are all <laughs> it's so generous, like all these resources. It's so useful and generous and I can speak to like how much it's benefited me. So just thank you for oh. doing that for all of us. <laughs> it's Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. I love to see what you will create. And um, <laughs> thank you so much, Cynthia. Wonderful to see we're color coordinated. <laughs> I know, it's so funny. I love it. Well, here, actually, let me get a quick picture of us, if you don't mind, for my social. <laughs> okay, and then I'm going to, um, I'll sign off and I'll, uh, I look forward to seeing you soon. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thanks right. for listening. Bye. Bye.